Good morning. Uh, my name is Mo Fredette, a member of American Legion, Hayes Village Post 96, uh, your host for today's program, and on behalf of all veterans of West Hartford, it is my privilege and honor to welcome you to our Veterans Day ceremony. In prior years, this ceremony has been held at the Connecticut Veterans Memorial, West Hartford, directly across the street uh, on Farmington Avenue. That memorial, like thousands of memorials across this nation, pays tribute to the men and women who have served this nation in times of conflict and in times of peace. Although we are not at the monument today, we are here to honor the courage and strength our military has shown throughout our nation's history. Most Americans profess to truly love our veterans, especially at gatherings like this on Veterans Day and Memorial Day. But let us not forget that veterans are defending us 365 days a year. The heroism that they have demonstrated time and again by veterans from the Revolutionary War to the Global War on Terrorism is sometimes unnoticed by those of us who enjoy the security that their sacrifice has provided. For many veterans, our nation was important enough to, dis to endure long separations from their families, miss the births of their children, freeze in some zero temperatures much lower than today's, bake in, in wild jungles, lose limbs, and far too often lose their lives. Military spouses have had to endure career interruptions, frequent changes of address, and disproportionate share of parental responsibilities. The children often had to deal with changes in schools, separation from friends, and hardest of all, the uncertainty of whether or not mom or dad will live through their next combat deployment. Historians have said that Dwight Eisenhower was prouder of being a soldier than he was of being the president. And while relatively few veterans ever reached the rank of general, pride in one's military service is a bond shared by nearly all of us who have served. Today, fewer than 10% of Americans can claim the title of veteran. Far less than 1% of our population is currently defending us in the global war on terrorism. Veterans have given us freedom, security, and the greatest nation on earth. And it's impossible to put a price tag on that. Today, Veterans Day is an important but symbolic way of saying thanks and remembering the legacy of all veterans because of what these men and women have done for us. To begin our ceremony, I would like to ask Deacon Jim Hickey of St. Peter Claver Church, an Air Force veteran, to offer the invocation. Thank you, Mo. Before I begin, and I've checked this out with Mo to make sure it was okay to do this, I've lived in this town for about 50 years now and I used to do TV service and drove around the town. I knew this town very well. And I'm amazed and disgusted at the number of homes that do not fly the American flag. Not just today, but every day to remember those who have given their lives for us to have the freedoms we have. So if you don't have a flag flying at your house, Run over to Home Depot after this, get yourself a flag and put it up, and fly it with pride. And bow your heads and let us pray. God of all nations, we give you thanks today for the devotion and courage of all those who have offered military service for this country, for those who have fought for freedom, for those who have laid down their lives for others, for those who have borne suffering of mind or body, for those who have brought their best gifts to times of need, for those who have entered into danger, endured separation from those they love, labored long hours, and borne the hardship of war and in peacetime. We ask you today that you would Lift up by your spirit those who are now at war. Encourage and heal those in hospitals or mending their wounds at home. Guard those in any need or trouble and bring the returning troops home safely. Give to us, your people, 
grateful hearts and a united will to honor these men and women and hold them always in our love and our prayers until your world is perfected in peace and all wars cease. Amen. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I'd like to ask the Sedgwick Top of the Sixes if they'd come forward. Um, we honor today to have the color guards of the West Hartford Police Department, the West Hartford Fire Department, and the American Legion Hazel Lodge Post 96 with us. Good looking group, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. Commander of the Guards, I'll call your units to attention and present arms. Today our national anthem will be sung by the top of the sixes from Cedric Middle School under the direction of Melissa Zen. Please stand. Commander of the Guard, call you units to order arms and stand at ease. Color Guard, order! Hold up, hold up. Stand at ease! I'd like to thank this outstanding group of students from Sedgwick Middle School and their director, Melissa Zen. Top of the Sixes is an audition, a sixth grade audition choir from Sedgwick Middle School has been under the direction of Melissa Zen for 18 years. They perform multiple concerts throughout the year, including a tour of the spring in the spring of feeder elementary schools to Sedgwick. Ladies and gentlemen, let's acknowledge these wonderful people. <laughs> Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I'd just like to take a brief mo moment to acknowledge some of the people who are with us today. Uh, our post commander, Jeffrey Cole, post 96 of the American Legion Hazel Lodge. Uh, ben Winograd, town council. Leon Davidoff, from the town council. Chris Barnes, as well. Thank you. Um, we are honored today to have as our keynote speaker, Andrew Clapsaddle, a Marine veteran and principal of Sedgwick Middle School. Born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, he joined the Marine Corps after completing high school and served for four years as a combat photographer and received an honorable discharge 
after his four years of service. As part of a military family, his father and older brother served in the Army and Marine Corps respectively. Principal Clive Saddle served, received his bachelor's degree from Towson University and master's degree from California State University, San Marcos. He has been a classroom teacher in New York and California and an assistant principal in California and Connecticut at the middle and high school levels. He currently serves as the principal of Cedric Middle School. Ladies and gentlemen, Andrew Clapsaddle. Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank everyone for being here today. Um, I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of veterans and commemora commemorating the service and sacrifice of all of our mi military service members. Before I share my thoughts on this special morning, I want to share what has brought me here today. My family has a history of military service, including, and most recently through um, Ancestry.com, uh, my great-great-great-grandfather, aunt's uncle's father and brother. My father was a tank commander in the United States Army, serving in Germany in the 1950s and 60s. My older brother served in the Marine Corps during Operation Desert Storm. His infantry unit was part of the liberation of Kuwait. Both my dad and my brother inspired and motivated me to serve my country, and I want to acknowledge and salute their service today. Veterans Day has a very important purpose. It's the day we recognize not just those who have given their lives in war, but all of those who have worn the uniforms of service. This day, above all, is an opportunity to celebrate the choice someone makes to serve their country. But as I began to reflect on my time in the military and its connection to my life, one important word came to mind, service. See, I remember growing up and hearing my grandparents asking people if they were in the service, basically asking if they were in the military. And at that point in my life, asking someone if they were in the service seemed like kind of an outdated term, since most of the members of my generation referred to soldiers, Marines, etc., as being in the military. However, as I began to think about that description and how it relates to our veterans, it's not outdated at all. In fact, it's more relevant today than ever. Service is defined as rendering assistance, help, or aid. So as we look at the bigger picture of what our military men in service really do, it's serve. And I don't think it's a coincidence that I transitioned from my service in the military to being an educator. The core values that were instilled in me in the Marine Corps, like motivation, commitment, courage, excellence and service are what guided me in my role as a teacher and now as a principal. And from my perspective, education is not a job. It's a calling. It's a commitment to mentorship and leadership, both core values in all of our armed services. Teaching young minds is a responsibility that cannot be taken lightly. It's full of frustrations, challenges and rewards. Parents, you know that. But it's also a responsibility full of excitement, wonder, and joy. We are lucky enough to live in a country where students have the freedoms that allow expression and creativity. Freedoms gained from the commitment and sacrifice of our military service members. As the business icon Lee Iacocca once said, in a completely rational society, the best of us would aspire to be teachers, and the rest of us would have to settle for something less. Because passing civilization along from one generation to the next should be the highest honor and the highest responsibility anyone could have. Now that I've shared with you my background and what service means to me, I want to take just a moment and share a few notable stories about our military veterans and their service. During World War II, a group of young African Americans known as the Tuskegee Airmen gained recognition at the f as the first black Americans to serve in the US military as pilots. Although segregation was still in force at the time, 994 brave men stepped up to the challenge of defending America. Most recently in 2011, the group's survivors and widows 
were honored with the Congressional Gold Medal for their wartime service. The Tuskegee Airmen didn't just break the mold when it came to wartime pilots, they paved the way for new opportunities for minority servicemen and women. Next, there are some, not me, who claim that the front lines of war are no place for women. However, they obviously do not know PFC Monica Brown. As an 18-year-old medic, she repeatedly risked her life during Taliban attacks in Afghanistan to shield and provide medical treatment to her fellow soldiers who had been wounded by mortar fire. Because of her bravery, she was awarded the Silver Star for her, her courageous actions. And lastly, I want to share another relevant story, one that doesn't highlight acts of bravery, but one that highlights service. Daryl Jones served in the U.S. Air Force for more than 20 years. He worked as an aircraft mechanic and retired as a tech sergeant. He deployed over one dozen times, including Iraq. After retiring from the military, Daryl used his GI Bill to earn his bachelor's degree in secondary education, and he currently teaches grade seven U.S. history. Daryl sh shared in a recent article that he, he is the first veteran his students have ever met, or at least the only one who talks about his or her service. He considers it his duty to make 9-11 relevant to students and to remind them that Veterans Day is to honor all who served. Every Friday, after students meet their daily goals, they participate in Free Learn Fridays. This is where students discuss any historical topic they wish. And after talking about aliens and Bigfoot, because they are seventh graders, <laughs> the discussion always turns to his experiences in the military. It is through his life that students experience the world. When people ask Darrell why he chose to be a teacher, his message is clear. He says, I want to continue to serve my country as I take care of children. We should all strive to serve others in some capacity, whether it's service to your country, your community, or your neighbors, because service is the foundation and the network of humankind. So as we leave today, I want to encourage everyone to help a veteran or a service member. We have many wounded veterans in our country, both physically and mentally, who need our support. Find a way to help them, whether it's through the Veterans Affairs Office, donations, local outreach programs. There are dozens of ways you can show your support for our nation's heroes. And a final message to our veterans, please, please, share your experiences and personal stories with someone new. The more we talk about what we do, share with others who we are, and the positive impact military service had on our lives, the more we will demonstrate to everyone that serving your country is an example of excellence. So I want to thank you for sharing this morning with us and showing your support for our veterans today. Thank you. Thank you, Principal. <coughs> excuse me. Thank you, Principal Papsaddle. <coughs> uh, <coughs> excuse me. There is another association to Cedric Middle School. I would like to briefly mention before introducing our next speaker. A former teacher at Cedric Middle School, John Paul Berard, was a leader in the efforts to recognize the service of all veterans from our community. The placement of flags on veterans' graves for Memorial Day and Veterans Day was a movement he led with his family, which continues today with the tremendous support of the community. I don't know if any of you were there uh, last weekend to place the flags at Fairview Cemetery or in pre prior years, but if you have not been there, I would strongly encourage you to do it in the future. And the commissioning and building of our Veterans Memorial was achieved with his help and determination. At this time, I would like to ask his daughter, Denise Hall, from the Town Council Liaison to the West Hartford Veterans Commission, say a few words. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Merle. So good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the West Hartford Veterans Day service. I have been very fortunate to have served as treasurer of the Veterans Memorial Committee that conceived and built the memorial that graces our town. 
and more recently as the Town Council Liaison of the Veterans Affairs Commission. My life has been enriched over these past 16 years by the opportunity to work with people like Mo Ferdette, Ken Hungerford, Jeff Cole, and many more veterans that are no longer with us except in our memories and remembered fondly as we walk around the, the wall at our memorial and read their names on the pavers. We have a new marker in the center of the memorial that had we had this across the street, I would have invited you all to look at, but um, please go visit it uh, as soon as it gets a little bit warmer. It is placed to remind people that the space in the center of the wall is hallowed ground, filled on dedication day with sands from the fields and water from the seas and oceans around the world where battles were fought and our servicemen and women died. In order to commemorate the sanctity of this spot, we have placed a stone in the center describing what lies beneath. Our former town manager, Ron Van Winkle, a veteran, and I would often lament that people were unaware and we thought it was important for people to take note as they walk through this space. I'd also like to thank Renee McHugh for her ongoing support of all of the issues um, that we, can, we, we deal with, with veterans and with the memorial. So we thank her for her assistance. So normally, if you've been to this service before, I'd like to provide a bit of a history lesson. But thankfully, we had uh, the principal to do some of that history today. But today is when we make a point of thanking veterans for their service. We shake their hands, we take them to lunch, I give them a hug, but how few of us really understand and appreciate exactly what we are thanking them for. Their willingness to stand between us and those who would do us harm. So instead of that history lesson, today I would like to share with you excerpts from a speech given by then Lieutenant General John Kelly on November 13th, 2010 describing a 2008 suicide bombing in Iraq that killed Marines Corporal Jonathan Yale, 22, and Lance Corporal Jordan Herder, 20, as they stood guard protecting their barracks. The Wall Street Journal published the excerpt recently under the heading, Six Seconds to Live. And hopefully hearing it will give us all a better appreciation of why we thank our veterans today and every day. Lieutenant General Kelly revealed that security cameras damaged initially in the blast recorded some of the suicide attack. And in his speech, he is describing what the camera recorded. It took exactly six seconds from when a truck entered an alley in Iraq until it detonated. So I'm quoting General Kelly. You can watch the last six seconds of their young lives. Putting myself in their heads, I suppose it took about a second for the two Marines to separately come to the same conclusion about what was going on once the truck came into their view at the far end of the alley. Exactly no time to talk it over or call the sergeant to ask what they should do only enough time to take half an instant and think about what the sergeant told them to do only a few minutes before. Let no unauthorized personnel or vehicles pass. The two Marines had about five seconds to live. It took maybe another two seconds for them to present their weapons, take aim, and open up. By this time, the truck was halfway through the barriers and gaining speed the whole time. Here the recording shows a number of Iraqi police, some of whom had fired their AKs, now scattering like the normal and rational men they were, some running right past the Marines. They had three seconds to live. For about two seconds more, the recording shows the Marines' weapons firing nonstop, the truck's windshield exploding, into shards of glass as the rounds take it apart 
and tore into the body of the son of a bitch who was trying to get past them to kill their brothers. American and Iraqi, bedded down in the barracks, totally unaware of the fact that their lives at that moment depended entirely on two Marines standing their ground. If they had been aware, they would have known they were safe because two Marines stood between them and a crazed suicide bomber. The recording shows the truck careening to a stop immediately in front of the two Marines. In all of the instantaneous violence, Yale and Harder never hesitated. By all reports and by the recording, they never stepped back. They never even started to step aside. They never even shifted their weight. With their feet spread shoulder width apart, they leaned into the danger firing as fast as they could work their weapons. They had only one second to live. The truck explodes, the camera goes blank. Two young men go to their god. <coughs> Six seconds. Not enough time to think about their families, their country, their flag, or about their lives or their deaths but more than enough time for two very brave young men to do their duty into eternity. That is the kind of people who are on watch all over the world tonight for you. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Um, our final speaker, Mayor Sherry Cantor, has served on the town council since 2004 and last year assumed the position of mayor and last Tuesday was re-elected as our mayor. A lifelong resident of West Hartford, she says one of her primary goals is ensuring that a town, as a town, we continue to position ourselves to remain vibrant for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Cantor. vertically challenged, Mayor. Um, I first want to thank um, everyone for attending. I want to give a special thanks to the color guards for being here, fire, police, and uh, from American Legion. I'm honored to participate. This is actually a, uh, a bit of a daunting task to come before you and to express our gratitude. It is always inadequate. Um, I also want to thank my minority leader, uh, D Leon Davidoff, Ben Winograd. Um, I think, and I know Chris Barnes is here. I don't know if anybody else from the council walked in. Ben, uh, Beth, uh, Beth Kerrigan is here. Chris Williams is now here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, again, I'm honored to participate today and recognize our service members, past and present, their sacrifices, their courage, and duty to country. The call to service, whether they were called up or whether they volunteered, required our servicemen and women to be part of something much bigger than themselves. Uh, for generations, these brave men and women have served to protect our country, defend our freedoms, and our way of life. The families and friends of our veterans have carried a heavy load from a painful goodbye, the daily worry, and the burden of carrying on the responsibilities at home while their loved ones dedicated themselves to serving their country. My nephew, a captain in the U.S. Air Force, left for South Korea on November 2nd, leaving his wife, Jessica, 10-year-old daughter, Maddie, and three-month-old daughter, Jade. I am thinking of them and all of the families that make this, these contributions to our country every day. Our prayers and thoughts are with them. As we join people across our country to pay tribute to those who have served, those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, and their families, we say we honor you, we remember you. We talk about ways we as Americans can give back to our veterans, today and every day. But what is important to know about veterans is that they are among the most active volunteers working to improve our communities across the country. Data from 2016 Veterans Civic Health Index Report created by Got Your Six revealed that veterans are more likely than non-veterans to volunteer with their neighbors to fix problems in their communities. Last year, veterans donated 30% more time to their volunteering to their communities than non-veterans. Volunteering is a two-way street, as, a daily, as daily Point of Light Award honoree Jose Martinez said, 
He found his calling with The Mission Continues, an organization that evokes veterans' inner call to service and engages them in projects that will improve their communities, reconnecting them not only with their communities, but also with themselves. We know this in West Hartford. We see it every day. We see our veterans or families of veterans improving our community in many ways. We have leaders in town that are veterans, as, as uh, Denise Hall mentioned, Ron Van Winkle, and his help in, in bringing forward the uh, Veterans Memorial. Our current town manager, Matt Hart, I don't know if Matt is here, he's also a veteran, or he's in the back. Um, we have our town planner, Todd Dumay, our public works director, John Phillips. These are just to name a few. But we also have volunteers that improve our community and enrich us all every day, like Mo Fredette, American Legion Post 96 Commander, chair, uh, the chair of our Commission of Veterans Affairs, Ken Colleton, and all of the commission members, uh, including Janet Fournier, who organizes a veterans program at Charter Oak School to share and teach the meaning of the day with our students. Uh, Ray and Lisa Philippon, a Gold Star family, having lost their son Larry and worked with the Connecticut Friend of Veterans to bring the global war on terror uh, the Wall of Remembrance to the Town Hall, uh, bringing veterans together. When I was there and I saw the veterans bonding and talking, it was so meaningful and so therapeutic. We have our own Denise Burrard Hall, who served as the treasurer for the Veterans Memorial Committee and organizing in her father's um, memory or the flags at Veteran Fairview Cemetery. Um, before Memorial Day and Veterans Day, her dad, Jean-Paul, was, al was also a World War II veteran like mine, and they passed away within weeks of each other. Then we have people like Ben Cooper, who know the benefit of pulling veterans together and listening to their stories, sharing the memories, building strong bonds. Ben was a World War II combat medic with the 45th Infantry, the Thunderbird Division. They liberated Dachau. Ben witnessed one of the most horrific and ugliest sides of humanity, and yet he has an amazing outlook on life. He has a card that he hands out if you, if, I don't know if Ben is here. Are you here, Ben? Oh, sorry, he isn't. Um, his card reads, save humanity, stop hatred and bullying by practicing my life-saving motto, no act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. You can do it, never give up. Always remember, we all belong to the same race, the human race. Ben started something called Roll Call on Monday, September 11th, Patriot's Day an informal gathering where veterans from all branches of the service can share common experiences and make new friends. Everyone is welcome to meet our veterans and watch history come alive. Come and listen. Talk to a veteran about their experience and know that veterans are helping our community every day to make it a better place. There are no words big enough. There are, is not a hug strong enough. There is not a smile wide enough. All I can offer is thank you. You are my hero. You are in my thoughts, you are in my prayers for all you have done and all you will do. Thank you. God bless our veterans, their families, and protect those serving. God bless our country and the town of West Hartford. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, at this time, we're going to present the memorial wreath at the conclusion of our ceremony here, that wreath will be moved back over to the Veterans Memorial at the corner of Farmington Avenue and uh, North Main Street. To present the memorial wreath, excuse me, uh, Commander, Sergeant of the Guards, call your units to attention. Commodore, attention! <laughs> to present the memorial wreath are Eagle Scouts Chris Stimson and Graham Douglas of Boy Scout Troop 163. Reaching the level of Eagle Scout is only achieved by about 3% of all boys participating in scouting and requires about 150 hours of effort in completing their Eagle Scout projects. Our congratulations to both Graham and Chris for this outstanding achievement. If you would stand, please. Sergeant of the Guard, call units to present arms. Color Guard, present,
Other guard, order, hook! I would like to thank our color guards, the West Hartford Police Department, under the command of our Sergeant of the Guards, Christopher Chappell, the West Hartford Fire Department under the command of Firefighter Cheryl Billow, and the American Legion under the command of Legionnaire Rocky Goodwin. Veterans come in all shapes and sizes, young and old, rich and poor, black and white, in nearly every category in between. They are men and women who have served or still serve America. The Connecticut Veterans Memorial, West Hartford, will forever honor those from West Hartford who made the supreme sacrifice and all who have served our nation. I would now ask Deacon Hickey to offer the closing prayer. Bow your heads for prayer. God of peace, we pray for those who have served our nation and have laid down their lives to protect and defend our freedom. We pray for those who have fought, whose spirits and bodies are scarred by war, whose nights are haunted by memories too painful for the light of day. We pray for those who serve us now, especially for those in harm's way. Shield them from danger and bring them home. Turn the hearts and minds of our leaders and our enemies to the work of justice and a harvest of peace. May the peace you left us, the peace you gave us, be the peace that sustains and saves us. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Sergeant of the Guard, call your unit to present arms. Other Guard, present, hook! I would now like to ask Peter Rowe of American Legion, Hazel Lodge Post 96, to sound taps. As we conclude this ceremony, I would like to ask all veterans in the audience today to join us in front here for a photo. Also, a special thank you to the Elmwood Senior Center, the Connecticut Police Work Dog Association, the American Legion, for sponsoring our first annual Veterans Luncheon last Thursday. Ladies and gentlemen, as you leave this Veterans Day ceremony today, please consider taking a walk, a short walk across the street to visit our memorial. May God bless each of you. May God bless and protect our servicemen and women in harm's way. May God bless our veterans who have kept our country free. And may God bless America. Thank you for joining us this morning.